Hi, I want to talk to you about this video. It's by the YouTuber Timmy Two Cents, and it's about Sue Klebold, who is the mother of Dylan Klebold, one of the two school shooters from the Column Mine school shooting. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I believe Timmy's video is extremely deceptive. It lets the viewers believe things that aren't true simply because of the way that Timmy presents them. Throughout his video, Timmy will say things that just simply aren't true. He will misattribute quotes to people that didn't say those things, and he will take actual quotes out of context to make them seem worse than they actually are. And now normally I'd be more charitable than to call someone a liar. I'd say that they were wrong or misguided, but in this specific case, I think that you'll agree the only way a video like his could be made would be if someone set out purposely to be deceptive. Now I don't want my video to be needlessly long, so I'm gonna miss some things unfortunately, but I'll do my best to address the most important things, okay? So with that being said, let's get into the video. If you didn't know, Sue Klebold is the mother of Dylan, who in 1999 tried to kill everyone at Columbine High School in Colorado. Sue claims that not only could she not have known, but no one could have identified her son as a deranged killer. Sue doesn't say anywhere in her TED talk that she couldn't have known that Dylan would turn out to be a school shooter, nor that nobody could have known that Dylan would turn out to be a school shooter. But we're going to come back to that claim in a little bit. But first of all, there are two things that I want to point out. And number one is that if Sue had said that she could couldn't have known that Dylan would turn out to be a school shooter, she would have been right. There was no way for Sue to know that Dylan would have turned out to be a school shooter, and yet Timmy just brushes over that, as if that suggestion is silly, even though it's the truth. The second thing is that nowhere in Timmy's video does he actually back up the claim that Sue claims that nobody could have known that he would turn out to be a school shooter. He just says it, and I tried my best to find her saying that, and I couldn't, which makes me think that he just made it up. But anyway, we'll come back to this a bit later into the video, so let's carry on watching. She has reached the highest level of cope, and I find her statements both counterproductive and insulting to rational parents and society at large. Because when you learn all the facts about the case, who Dylan was, the mountain of evidence showing Dylan and Eric's plan, it's hard to imagine why Ted would ever allow her anywhere near a stage and a microphone. Sue is the parent of one of the most deranged children that has ever walked earth. And without an admission of error, she has nothing to teach us. So there's two things to address here. Number one, you talk about the mountain of evidence. And presumably you're talking about the notebooks and the recordings that show their plan for Columbine, right? But it's important to point out to the audience that Sue didn't have access to this information. She didn't have access to the tapes and she didn't have access to the notebooks until six months after the shooting. She didn't have access to their plans. And so why is it silly for Ted to offer her a TED talk just because they have access to those plans in retrospect? Your argument only makes sense if Sue had access to those things but she didn't. The second thing is that you say that Sue doesn't have anything useful to provide unless she offers an admission of guilt. And yet eight seconds later, you cut off the part in her TED talk where she gives an admission, where she says that she failed as a mother. Here's the part that you show in your video. Before the shootings, I thought of myself as a good mom, helping my children become caring, healthy, responsible adults was the most important role in my life. I wanted to first check. And then here's the bit immediately following on from there. This was the most important role in my life. But the tragedy convinced me that I failed as a parent. And it's partially this sense of failure that brings me here today. Later on in my video, I'm going to show more places where Sue has tried to take responsibility. And they're all from sources that you've cited in your video, which means that you've seen it and then you've chosen to not include it in your video because it doesn't feed the narrative that you're trying to weave. A thing throughout Timmy's video is him suggesting that Sue needs to take responsibility for the shootings, but I want you to consider what exactly is it that she needs to take accountability for. That is the case that I would expect Timmy to make in his video, is what exactly is it that she's not taking accountability for? And so I want you to just keep an eye out for that as we carry on watching the video. Now it's gonna get very interesting because this is when the real deception begins. A New York Times article reviewed Sue's book. The top comment reads, Watching her rationalize her son's murderous actions is nauseating. She blames ignorance and Eric Harris, but never herself, a vile person. Now, this is a very interesting move that Timmy makes, where instead of citing the book or citing the New York Times review of the book, we're citing the comment section on the review of the book. You read out a comment saying that she doesn't take responsibility, and yet if you were to read out the article to your viewers, you would read this. 
The crime of which Klebold convicts herself is ignorance, and for that she feels bottomless guilt. She recalls being dumbfounded when someone asked her if she could ever forgive her son. Forgive Dylan, I said. My work is to forgive myself. I was the one who let him down, not the other way around. You say she's not taking responsibility, and yet to me, it seems like she's almost taking too much responsibility. Because again, she didn't cause this. One would presume that since you've read the comments on that article, that you've actually read the article. Which means that you saw her trying to take responsibility, and then you went on to claim, even though you knew better, that she didn't take any responsibility. People are able to know so much more about Dylan and Eric because of all the information they left behind. Because Columbine wasn't committed by a lone wolf who kept to himself. And it's worth noting, there hasn't been another school shooting involving multiple people since Columbine. It's very interesting that you say this, because again, it's not true. In 2019, there was a school shooting at the STEM High School in Colorado, where two students, Devin Michael Erickson and Alex McKinley, went into their high school and shot up the place, killing one and injuring eight. Now, I found this information in one Google search. That's all it would have taken for Timmy to find out that he was wrong was one Google search. And yet he was perfectly content to just sit there and say something that wasn't true and then include it in the final edit of the video. It just says a lot about his credibility. In 2004, Sue did an interview where she went into defense mode saying that Dylan did not do this because of the way he was raised. He did it in contradiction to the way he was raised. Shocker. Parents of mass murderer take no responsibility. Responsibility for what? You still haven't made any claim for what it is that Sue is supposed to be taking responsibility for. Sue didn't abuse her kids. She didn't keep guns in the house. There were no guns from the Klebold residence that were used in the school shooting. What exactly is it that she should be taking responsibility for? Timmy seems to know something that we don't know. It'd be mighty fine if you'd share it with us. The worst part of the interview is when Tom Klebold, Dylan's dad, says... People need to understand this could have happened to them, which is another way of saying school shooters are completely random. No, it isn't. And this is a perfect example of Timmy taking words out of context to make them seem worse than they actually are. In the interview, Tom and Sue were talking about the fact that they're looking for answers of what it was that turned their son into a killer. Let's read it in context. When they talk about the event, they discuss it as a suicide. They acknowledge but do not emphasize the murders their son committed. They also think about the signs that they missed. He was hopeless. We didn't realize it until after the end, Tom said. Susan added, I think he suffered horribly before he died and for not seeing that, I will never forgive myself. They believe that what they call the toxic culture of the school, the worship of jocks and the tolerance of bullying is the primary force that set Dylan off, but they confess that in the main, they have no explanation. I'm a quantitative person, said Tom, a former geophysicist. We're not qualified to sort this out. They long for some authoritative study that will provide an answer. People need to understand, Tom said, this could have happened to them. In that quote, they're talking about the fact that they're looking for the things that radicalize their son. They're not saying it's random. If they were saying it's random, they would say that there was no cause of what turned their son into a killer. But they're not saying that, and Timmy suggesting it is a lie. I would have also have loved for Timmy to have read out the next paragraph after the one that he cited, where the author of the interview gives his views on the situation. My instinct is that Dylan Klebold was a self-initializing moral agent who made his choices and should be condemned for them. Neither his school nor his parents determined his behavior. Now his parents have been left with the terrible consequences. I'd say that they're facing them bravely and honorably. Could we just take a moment to acknowledge the fact that Timmy is taking the words of victims out of context here to make them seem bad. Now you can argue to what degree people are victims. Obviously they're not as much victims as the victims of the families, but they're definitely victims because again, they didn't cause this. In 2009, Sue wrote an essay, I Will Never Know Why for Oprah Magazine. Mike Litwin of the Denver Post wrote an article criticizing the essay. He said, Klebold wrote too much and at the same time revealed so little. It's not just that she tells only her side of the story. It's that you know while reading it, there's so much she either doesn't see or doesn't want us to see. Why are we doing this again? Why is it that instead of citing an article that you mentioned briefly, we're citing somebody else's negative review of the article? Is the reason that you don't want to read out the article because if you do, you're going to have to read out this? Those of us who cared for Dylan felt responsible for his death. We thought, if I had been a better mother, father, brother, friend, aunt, uncle, cousin, I would have known that this was coming. We perceived his actions to be our failure. 
I tried to identify a pivotal event in his upbringing that could account for his anger. Had I been too strict, not strict enough? Had I pushed too hard or not hard enough? In the days before he died, I had hugged him and told him how much I loved him. I had held his scratchy face between my palms and told him that he was a wonderful person and that I was proud of him. Had he felt pressured by this? Did he feel like he couldn't live up to my expectations? I longed to talk to Dylan one last time to ask him what he'd been thinking. I spoke to him in my thoughts and prayed for understanding. I concluded that he must not have loved me because love would have prevented him from doing what he did. And though at moments I was angry with him, mostly I thought that I was the one who needed his forgiveness because I'd failed to see that he needed help. Again, this is a mother trying to find a way to put the blame on herself for what happened when ultimately she didn't cause this. Given that this is an article that you've mentioned, presumably you've read it. You've read her trying to take the blame and then you've made a whole video about the fact that she's not willing to take the blame. It's so disingenuous. And yet you've still failed to make the case for what it is that Sue's supposed to be taking responsibility for. In 2016, Sue released her book and did her first TV interview. We'll talk more about the book later in the video, but she says things like this in her book. The ultimate message of this book is terrifying. You may not know your own children and worse yet, your children may be unknowable to you. The stranger you fear may be your own son or daughter. At least she's consistent with her messaging. Now, this is a perfect example of Timmy just blatantly lying to you. He presents a quote as if it's Sue saying these words. He even says, well, at least Sue is consistent with her messaging. But that quote isn't from Sue. Those are the words of the author Andrew Solomon, who wrote the foreword to Sue's book, giving his views and his opinions on the situation. Everyone hearing that quote, myself included, would have assumed that those were Sue's words when they simply weren't. And this happens more than once in Timmy's video, where he misquotes someone claiming that these are Sue's words. It happens again later on. In 2017, we have the TED Talk, and she ends the talk with this statement. In the end, what I know comes down to this. The tragic fact is that even the most vigilant and responsible of us may not be able to help. But for love's sake, we must never stop trying to know the unknowable. Thank you. She insinuates that any child could be secretly plotting a massacre and that parents can't know. However, we should keep trying anyway. When Sue talks about the unknowable in her TED talk, she's wrapping up a talk on depression. She's saying that you don't always know how someone is feeling and how they're thinking. And that's a fact. And suicide is prevalent. It's the second leading cause of death for people aged 10 to 34. And 15 percent of American youth report having made a suicide plan in the last year. I've learned that no matter how much we want to believe we can, we cannot know or control everything our loved ones think and feel. In the description, I'm gonna leave citations to everything I reference, every article and every video, so that you know that I'm not pulling a Timmy on you, but I implore you to go watch the TED Talk in full. I promise you that there is no rational way for you to watch the TED Talk and assume that she's saying that anyone's kid could become a school shooter. It's not what she's talking about. She's talking about depression. And yet again, I'd like to re-emphasize the fact that you can't always know when someone is going to become a school shooter. If she was saying that, it would be true. I mean, is Timmy suggesting that he has a way to spot a school shooter early? Share it with us. We'd love to know. Now, the next part of the video is my favorite misrepresentation where Timmy introduces Randy and Judy Brown. And in 2020, Randy Brown released a book titled the inside story of Columbine, lies, cover-ups, ballistics. Randy had a son who was friends with Dylan at one point, and he knew the Klebold family personally. This is a home videotape of Dylan in Randy's home, and this is a picture of Randy's son, Brooks, with Dylan. For clarity, Randy's wife is Judy, and Randy specifically references Sue Klebold's book in this passage. I read it, and I was really upset. It was not the truth. There, plain and simple, it was not the truth. She makes light of the warnings that Judy gave her about Eric Harris. Judy told her that he was dangerous and to keep him away from Dylan. Judy warned her very clearly as a friend. Sue ignored her. Sue was warned and chose to ignore it. That's pretty damning, right? I mean, Judy had warned Sue about Eric and how dangerous Eric was. 
Now, we're going to come back on this in a minute, and I'm going to provide you some context that's going to turn that narrative right on its head. But first, I just want to mention the fact that Judy Brown was actually friends with Sue Klebold, and on the morning of the Columbine school shooting, they were actually together. And do you know who doesn't blame Sue Klebold for the school shooting? Judy Brown. Judy, let me ask you about Sue Klebold, uh, the mother of Dylan Klebold. She is, must be looking back on this every day, thinking to herself, what could I have done? Uh, I think, again, as we look back on this crime at the end of the year now, some people are still looking at the parents, still saying the parents should have done more. How could these kids have obtained these weapons, made these videos? The parents never would have found out. You still talk to Sue Klebold on a regular basis. So what is she thinking about that? Um, we talk quite openly about it. She has nothing to hide. Um, in the first place, a lot of those things didn't take place in the Klebold house that I am aware of and that she is aware of. Um, Sue wants the answers to, I'm asking kids, I'm trying to find out any clue we can get. Uh, this part of Dylan's personality, I'm not getting anything. And, and we, we want the answers. Um, Sue was not aware of this behavior in her child. I wouldn't be defending Sue, believe me. Uh, you have to remember that Dylan that day meant to kill both my children. I had a child in the cafeteria and Dylan knew he was in the cafeteria. I would not be defending this mom if I thought that she knew, even though she was a good friend. This mom did not know and this was a good nurturing mom. And that was Judy Brown on CNBC shortly after the shooting. And Timmy in his video suggests that Judy Brown knew how evil Eric was and that she had warned Sue. And then Timmy goes on to say this. As we'll talk later, Randy reported Eric Harris to the police more than a year before Columbine. And he was the only one who publicly addressed the issue in advance. You went to them and said, here's a red flag. More than a red flag, here were three felonies that we had turned into them, making and detonating pipe bombs and threatening my son's life, and they didn't pursue it. They didn't do their job. I was utterly dumbfounded that they did nothing with the web pages. Eric was saying how he was going to blow people up. Hey, I'm making pipe bombs. I've got the designs for them on my website. Um, I'm going to kill these people. Here's why. That's a level beyond making a joke. That's even more damning, right? Eric had this website where he wrote about how to make bombs and he would made a hit list and spoken about how he was going to shoot up the school. That's truly evil. How could Sue have not known what was going to happen? This mom did not know and this was a good nurturing mom. And could not have known. I mean, let's accept the fact that she didn't know, but I think still a lot of people are saying, but she should have known even if she didn't. It, you know, that is hard to believe, but I know what she knows, and I will tell you, I did not share the web pages with her in the beginning, and I've explained that that's quite complicated, until after the tragedy did I share the web pages with her. When I shared the web pages with her, she said, oh my, Eric is such an angry child. She had never known that. That's right. Judy hadn't warned Sue about the website. Sue didn't know about the pipe bomb recipe, about the hit list, about the plans to go blow up the school. She didn't know. But now Tibby has built a narrative where you think, well, Judy had warned Sue about Eric, and Judy knew how evil Eric was, therefore Judy must have warned Sue about all of the evil things that Eric was getting up to. But that's just not the case. Judy had told Sue that Eric was dangerous. That was it. No specifics, not that he was evil, not that he was going to blow up a school and he had this website, just that he was dangerous. And it would have been very difficult for Sue to know how evil Eric was when the Browns didn't even tell Eric's parents how evil Eric was. We knew Eric was dangerous. We didn't know what he was going to do. And we were cautious. Right. Um, he did set off fireworks on our front, right on that front um, sidewalk there, on, right by the door. Um, he shot a window on the house. They had uh, burned bushes uh, at, at a friend's house. Uh, right. But so we went to the police. We didn't go to the parents. You go to the parents and they're going to go, oh, let's, we can work this out. He's a good kid. Okay, let's do that. We went to the police. Right. We went to the police a lot. Timmy then goes on to say that Randy Brown should be offered a TED Talk because Randy was quote, the first person to correctly assess a modern shooter in history. Now, even this isn't true. Randy will openly admit that he didn't know how evil Eric was. Judy thought that Eric was going to attack their son. She didn't think that he was going to shoot up the school or blow up the school. Did you think Eric could commit mass murder? Um, actually, we thought Eric would kill Brooks is what we thought would happen. 
Right. Um, and and I was Judy had Gavin De Becker talk. Gavin De Becker talks about it in his book, uh, the gift of fear, and that that women, and it's odd, have a sense of danger that you that they listen to that men tend to ignore. Right. Yeah. Judy knew that from the beginning. I didn't. I, I didn't believe it as much. I thought it was more harassment and problems, and this kid's a jerk, and right. Um, and Brooke seemed to be handling it okay. But right. Judy had that with these kids. She knew Eric was dangerous. Right. I didn't know that Eric was as dangerous as I as he turned out to be. Oh my gosh. So they were the first ones to assess a modern shooter in history is a broad statement that isn't even backed up by any facts. But let's just take a moment to consider what would a TED talk from Randy Brown look like? What does Randy believe caused the school shooting? Well, the answer you'll be surprised to know isn't bad parenting, it's not Sue Klebold, and it's not video games, and it's not gun control. He blames it on the culture of bullying within the school. This is backed up by the journals. Both Eric and Dylan write about being bullied. Dylan especially writes about being bullied. And so now knowing Randy's position, let's look back on that quote about why Sue's book is a lie. Randy says that the reason Sue's book is a lie is because she doesn't talk about the radicalization from bullying in her book. He actually speaks about it in an interview. There's so many things that she just didn't tell about um, that are very important. And, and they're very important, forgetting about Sue, but to understanding Columbine, the process of violentization, they're very important showing Dylan's process through the violentization stages where he's bullied. So then he starts to um, fight back in small ways. And, and then he starts to develop this persona of uh, uh, someone who can fight back with the black coat and the sunglasses. And that's that, and see all the other hundreds of things that we know fit this concept that, and it's, it's, it's more than one concept, it's humiliation, hypervigilance, and violentization, and the, the way that those three react, and, and, and the process of going through those that develop school shooters. But, if she had written about those things, then people reading this could go, and then when they read other things, they go, wait, that fits exactly what Sue said. That's, I just learned something about why this kid did this and, and the process of why he became so angry. It wasn't that he was crazy. He was reacting to the bullying that he was experiencing and he was fighting back. And right. it's part of the violentization process. And so if she had just told the truth in the book, it would have helped. And that's why I'm... I know it's awful to say that the book is a lie. Most of the book is a lie. And it matters because people read it and they go, oh, there's no reason why Dylan did this. You've right. got to be kidding me. Of course there's a reason Dylan did this. Right. And she just didn't say it because she doesn't know what it is. What's interesting is that he says that she doesn't talk about it because she doesn't know what it is. And so it's not an accusation of being deceptive. Now, I'm going to leave that interview in the description as well. And I implore you to go watch the full interview. And so if Randy did a TED talk, it would be about bullying and bullying causing school shootings. But what's funny about that is if Sue had done that in her TED talk, you would have accused her of shirking responsibility and that she's being dishonest. I think that just shows how fundamentally dishonest you're being. She could have and should have prevented Dylan from hanging out with Eric, which would be standard good parenting, both today and in the 90s. And before people make excuses for Sue, blah, 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 she did the best she could, blah, 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 blah. Dylan's mother worked at a psychiatric hospital in the past and even had a master's degree in educational sciences. I don't think I'm holding her to this unrealistic high standard here. Sue worked as a therapeutic art teacher in a psychiatric hospital. I think saying that she worked in a psychiatric hospital is doing a lot of heavy lifting here because I don't think that any of us would expect an art teacher to be able to assess a school shooter. I think it's super interesting that Timmy just says that Sue worked in a psychiatric hospital to make us all think that she had some psychiatric insight. When she didn't, she was an art teacher and he purposely presented it in a way to be dishonest. And what does happen? Having a master's degree in educational sciences have to do with assessing a school shooter. 
She's not a psychiatrist. So now we move on to Dylan's brother, Byron, where Timmy presents Sue as a terrible mother who has raised two bad kids. He says this. Byron also got caught breaking into a Denny's, a uh, American diner, and got a DUI driving drunk. Things were so bad that in Sue's own words, they kicked Byron out of the house by age 19. Once again, Timmy says that these are Sue's words when they're not. These are the words of the counselor, Andrea Sanchez, from the Juvenile Diversion Program, giving her views after she interviewed Dylan. Sue didn't even get to read this report until six months later, and she actually writes about it in her book. She says this, Juvenile records are usually sealed, but after the tragedy, Dylan's diversion reports were released. They stated that Tom and I had kicked our older son out of the house for using drugs. That brought me up short. The decision for him to leave the home had been Byron's, made in consultation with a family counsellor, and the move itself had been completely amicable. Plus, Byron was still very much in our lives after he moved out. We saw him for dinner at least once or twice a week. So when you suggest that Sue openly admits to kicking Byron out of the house, you're just lying. And now again, I don't like calling people liars. I prefer to say, oh, he's wrong here, but when it's lie after lie after lie, the only thing I can do is call you out for lying. There's another interesting detail though, in the diversion program, where they say this. His punishments usually consist of being grounded and not being able to use the computer. Mr. and Mrs. Klebold feel involved in Dylan's life and said that they know where he is and who he's with most of the time. After this incident occurred, he was grounded for a month and was not allowed to spend time with Eric. Timmy wants you to believe that Sue didn't tell Dylan to not hang out with Eric, that she knew how bad Eric was, and that she never did anything to get between them. And yet again, it's not true. Timmy has spent the last five minutes of his video talking about how bad Eric was, and that if Sue was a good mother, she would have done anything she could to keep Dylan away from Eric. And yet what we learn in the diversion notes is that that's exactly what they were trying to do. Now, if you've ever been a child, which I assume you have, you'll know how difficult it is for your parents to get you to stop hanging hanging out with someone, especially when you go to the same school. It's almost impossible. But for Timmy to suggest that she didn't even try is just dishonest, especially when Timmy is quoting from the exact same page as that sentence. But the problem is nobody is claiming that Sue beat Dylan in a basement dungeon. It's just that she was a bad mom. Okay, so here we go. Now Sue is a bad mom. Is he gonna give justification for it? Well, we'll see, but here's what we know so far. Before the school shooting, Sue didn't know about the plans. She didn't have access to the notebooks. She didn't have access to the tapes. And so she can't rationally be blamed for the shooting. Also, she didn't keep guns in her home. None of Sue's guns were used in the school shooting. So she can't be blamed for that. She didn't abuse her kids. And in the diversion notes, which you referenced, they say this. Dylan describes his relationship with his parents as better than most kids and says that they are supportive, loving, dependable, and trustworthy. His parents said that Dylan has a difficult time communicating with them, but he is getting better. And then Sue wasn't told about the website. The police were, and the school were. They were the ones that failed, not Sue. And then after the van break-in, Sue tried to get Dylan away from Eric. And so what more could Sue have done based on the information she had access to? You're calling her a bad mother, but based on what? What argument are you presenting? And again, everything that I've presented has been stuff that you've spoken about. So you've seen the same information and you've chosen to hide it. And frankly, we're all still waiting to find out what it is that Sue should be taking responsibility for, because he still hasn't said. And finally, Sue consistently gaslights the audience and cherry picks what she wants the audience to think about her to shape a narrative. There are numerous examples. One that sticks out in my mind is when she tells a story about how Dylan forgot Mother's Day one year. That spring, we had the worst argument we ever had during his lifetime. It happened on Mother's Day, the last Mother's Day we had together, and it still hurts me to remember it. I can't remember exactly what set me off. I was heartstruck about a disastrous year I'd had with both my kids, angry about Dylan's continuing negativity and bad attitude, and quietly hurt he had forgotten Mother's Day. When I confronted him about his attitude, I had this feeling he was responding not to me, but to some inner joke. It seemed disrespectful. Fed up, I got in his face. I shoved him against the fridge, pinning him there with my hand. Then I waved my finger and gave him a real mom lecture. I didn't yell, but there was authority in my voice as I told him he had to stop being so crabby and selfish. The world doesn't revolve around you. Dylan, it's time for you to think about other people in this family. You need to start carrying your weight. 
Then I reminded him he had forgotten Mother's Day. Finally, in a soft voice that carried warning and power, he said, stop pushing me, mom. I'm getting angry and I don't know how well I can control it. Even though she's trying to spin a narrative, she can't help but reveal who she is in these stories. It's very strange she doesn't pick up on the violence in this situation. You almost miss it if you don't pay attention carefully. Sue is seemingly unaware of how violent Dylan was. He threatened that he might not be able to control himself if she doesn't back off. And she admits to pushing him up against the fridge in the beginning of the confrontation. I have a hard time believing that this is how the dispute went down or that this was the worst fight they ever had. But it's interesting that she chose this as the worst Example, because to a narcissist, forgetting birthdays or Mother's Day is a big deal. One of the things that Timmy does in his video that really bothers me is when he goes, I have a hard time believing X, Y, and Z, as if that's a valid point, but it means nothing. It just means that he doesn't believe something based on nothing. Because if Timmy had evidence of a larger fight between Sue and Dylan, he would have provided it in the video. He doesn't have a good reason to not believe it. He's just telling us that he doesn't believe it. But regardless, Regardless of that, if we keep reading the quote that you read out and we keep reading beyond where you read, it builds a bigger picture than the one that you're trying to portray. Later, we sat together at the kitchen table. We both felt awful. I apologized for losing my temper. Dylan apologized for forgetting Mother's Day and volunteered to help me prepare dinner. That afternoon, he went to buy me a card and an African violet planted in a tiny watering can. It was a perfect gift. I love miniatures and we'd collected some together when he was little. We hugged. I thought it was okay, although I noted he'd only signed his name to the card instead of saying, love Dylan. Of course, I wish we hadn't fought, particularly on Mother's Day, but I felt justified. Aren't you supposed to confront your kids when you feel like they're straying off the straight and narrow? I feel differently about that fight now. I know that hugging my son and telling him that I loved him wouldn't have stopped him from hurting himself and others. Still, I wish I'd taken his hand. Sit down with me. Talk to me. Tell me what's going on. Instead of telling him everything he was doing wrong or what he had to be grateful for, I wish I'd listened and validated his pain. If I had to do it all over again, I'd tell him, you've changed and it's scaring me. But I wasn't scared. I should have been, but I was not. Now you'll notice that the argument isn't about Dylan forgetting Mother's Day. The argument is about Dylan's attitude getting worse and he's now gone so far off the rails that Sue's trying to get him back on track. And so to illustrate this to Dylan, she points out the fact that he's forgotten Mother's Day. The argument isn't about Mother's Day. And yet in Timmy's video, he makes it out that the argument is about Mother's Day and that Sue is a narcissist because she makes such a big deal out of Dylan forgetting Mother's Day. It is just another example of Timmy taking words out of context to make them seem worse than they actually are. And Sue had a history of downplaying her son's problems even um, before the shooting. Just look at this diversion paperwork. Look at how much Sue writes in relation to Dylan's criminal history. Dylan is blunt about his crime. Sue writes a book about the event and insinuates that the crime wasn't that bad. She uses a bunch of wobbly language. The boys found a van. The van had a ticket on it, so the boys thought it was abandoned. And then they saw if they could get some electronic equipment by helping themselves to some of the contents. And now Timmy's just clutching at straws. At the diversion hearing, Sue was asked to write in her own words the offense that was committed by Dylan, and she does exactly that. Does she lie? No, she writes about it in her own words. And if you read her book, which I'm starting to doubt that Timmy has, if you've read her book, you'll know that that is the way that Sue just writes anyway. But you know what, Timmy, you're right. What a terrible mother Sue is for trying to avoid jail time for her son. Her son who, up to this point, only has two things on his criminal record and they're both traffic violations. Terrible mother. And this sort of wishy-washy language is all over the place. She writes, in fall of 98, Dylan and friends who had access to the school's computer figured out how to find old locker combinations. Look at how she crosses out gained access to who had access. It shifts the blame over to the friends, mainly Eric. This is a terrible example from Timmy because this is a valid edit. The words gained access imply something illicit and who had access would be correct because she's talking about Eric here. Eric was a student assistant in the tech lab. Eric already had access to the computers and if Sue had claimed that he gained access to the computers, she would have been implicating Eric, not Dylan. 
why would Sue go through this media campaign? Why not slip into obscurity and move on with life? I believe that Sue is a narcissist on steroids. She finds it unpleasant that she had this role of a parent to one of the most mentally destructive children in the history of humanity. And in light of what her son did, she found a way to get attention and admiration when most would never dare. Sue's hairdresser was interviewed shortly after the shooting. But Dee Grant, Susan Klebold's hairdresser, saw her just days after the shooting. She had no idea her son She was. had no idea. I asked her if she had any idea. And uh, she did say, no, I did not want to pry. I just find this odd. Even if Dylan had just committed suicide, harming no one but himself, I can't imagine getting my hair done in such a short proximity to the tragedy. Now, towards the conclusion of his video, Timmy says that Sue must be a narcissist because days after the shooting, she went to go get a haircut from her hairdresser. And now people deal with grief in many different ways. Some people lock themselves inside of their house and some people can't bear to be inside of their house because imagine being Sue the next morning, walking down the stairs, going into the kitchen where your son used to stand at the kitchen counter and he's not there. And you're immediately reminded not only that your son is now dead, but that he's just killed so many people. Walking down those long echoing hallways and past the empty bedroom. Can you imagine what that's like? And so wanting to get out of the house doesn't seem crazy to me. And for you to say that that's narcissistic, is disgusting. But while we're talking about the hairdresser, let's keep running that clip and see what the hairdresser has to say. She was upset that they were talking about all this prejudice. Um, she says, Dee, we never teach prejudice in our home. She says, Dee, I'm Jewish. This is just as much a tragedy for them as the victims. I mean, all these good people have been victimized by this act. Here's another account of Sue trying to come to terms with what's happened. She doesn't understand and at this point, no one has seen what's in the tapes and no one has seen what's written in the notebooks. So she is genuinely in real time grieving and trying to come to terms with what has happened. And you saw this footage in the same video you took it from and decided to not include it. Now, I found the conclusion to this video to be most enlightening because right at the end, Timmy suggests this. Columbine happened for many reasons. Poor mental health, the toxic school environment, easy access to weapons, a lack of police and school response, and most importantly, terrible parenting. There, I said it. Now, what's interesting about this is that first, Timmy mentions a number of things that are to blame for Columbine. And yet earlier in the video, when Sue blamed those things, he accused her of shirking responsibility and that she was trying to blame everyone else other than herself. But that's by the by, because he says that the most important cause of Columbine was bad parenting. Now I ask you, has he made this case? Has he laid out the case of her being a bad mum? Because I certainly didn't see it. So in summary, let's just talk about the things that you've done in your video. Just the things I chose to speak about. You have lied about Sue saying that she couldn't have known and that nobody could have known that Dylan would turn out to be a school shooter. And then you went out of your way to quote the author Andrew Solomon and claim that it was Sue saying those words. And then later in that diversion notes, he did the same thing about the counselor Andrea Sanchez and said those were Sue's words. You've lied about Sue not taking responsibility and saying that she doesn't provide an admission of error. And yet you've edited out the parts where she does and not cited the parts in the articles that you've mentioned where she does. You cited comment on articles instead of reading the article and negative reviews of Sue's articles rather than telling us what's actually in the article. You've taken Sue and Tom's words out of context to try and make them look worse than they actually are and you've completely misrepresented the views of Judy and Randy Brown. You've claimed that Sue didn't even try and take Dylan away from Eric which wasn't true. You misrepresented Sue as working in a psychiatric hospital even though she was just a therapeutic art teacher. You've claimed that Sue's a bad mother without any justification and you've even implied that she's lying at times. You honestly would have to go out of your way to make a video that tendentious. You must have put in a lot of effort to fill a video with that many lies, Timmy. For what it's worth, I believe the same thing as Randy and Judy Brown. The blame stands squarely at the door of the police and the school who had had the reports of Eric's website and the hit list and the pipe bombs and they chose to do nothing. Those are the ones that you should blame. 
And I also believe that the thing that radicalized Dylan and Eric into hating the school and, and ultimately shooting up the school was bullying. They were ritually bullied. They were pushed into lockers. They had ketchup thrown over their clothes. In one instance, they even had ketchup put on tampons and then had the tampons thrown at them. When you are bullied that much in a school, you start to hate the school. Now, I know that doesn't provide any mitigation for what they did, but those are the facts. And that's why I find it so disgusting that you did what you did. Well, you made a video just filled with lies and misrepresentations and misattribution of quotes and taking quotes out of context in order to make a hate mob against Sue Klebold, who was one of the victims of Columbine. You'll probably say that you didn't make a hate mob, and yet if you look in the comments under your video, the top comments, you'll see this. Imagine your child is repeatedly caught breaking laws and the maddest you ever get at him is when he forgets Mother's Day. Narcissism to the extreme. You can tell how uninvolved and shitty a parent that Sue is just by the fact she doesn't take or even feel a little responsibility for what happened. How dare Ted give her a platform? How hurtful this woman is to the victims in this tragedy? The fact that she's written articles, given interviews and gave this TED talk seeking the spotlight tells us everything we need to know about why Dylan went unchecked. She she is indeed a horrible parent and her vile words have no value. Ironic that by speaking out like this in an effort to lessen her blame, she's made it clear that she deserves even more blame. This woman is culpable for what happens and she knows it. That's why her biggest fear was, is, being confronted by people who hold her accountable. Timmy, this is the effect that you've had on people. This is what people have taken away from your video. Some people have even taken away the idea that she was doing it for money. This woman is literally cashing in on her son's status as a mass murderer. That's all I need to know. The fact that not only did she refuse to take any responsibility for what happened, but also made a profit off of it, is conclusive proof that she was a dreadful mother who helped to raise a psychopath. She belongs under the prison. I think it would have been useful if Timmy had pointed out that all of the proceeds from Sue's book went directly to mental health and suicide charities. It's also worth pointing out the fact that Ted doesn't pay people for their TED talk, so I don't know where people got this idea that she's made profit off of it. Honestly, she fits the bill of someone who would raise a school shooter. Having no guilty conscience over the massacre and seemingly only upset by the fact that people might think she should feel guilty. You opened my eyes about Sue Klebold. I had read her book, watched her TED talk, I did feel sorry for her, and believed her. You have created this hate mob. I hope that you can sleep at night knowing that you made a video filled with lies, a hit piece against a vulnerable victim of Columbine. If you had one ounce of credibility about you, Timmy, you would take down the video. You would launch an apology and you would tell everyone exactly what you did and why you did it. You should ask for an apology from your audience and you should ask for an apology absolutely from Sue Klebold. And if they don't accept your apology, well, I guess you're gonna have to delete your channel. And with that, that's the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back soon. Subscribe, like the video. I'll be back. Bye. What do you say to all the people now who are pointing the finger at the parents and saying, well, they should have known it's their responsibility? This is a man and a woman who love their children, who love their son, especially Dylan right now, who thought they were doing the best they could to raise him. And the parents both wish they could take their son's place.